Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you uh, for your time today. Um, my study was on investment in the Apple industry. And to, uh, to study that, I had to break that down to why we need investment, what limits us in attracting investment, uh, what, uh, how we change the limitations, and what opportunities will investment present for our industry. My name's Fiona Hall, 2015 scholar. So a little bit about us, as Richard's already said, uh, we're cherry, cherry growers and packers. We have around 20 uh, growers that, from around New South Wales that supply our pack house, where we market, brand and export their cherries. We also have apple orchards around the Orange District. We actually brand all our products under the Bite, uh, Bite Right brand. Uh, we have value-added products with uh, cherry juices, and we do uh, the fresh produce as well. Firstly and foremostly, I'd like to thank my investors, HIA and uh, APAL Australia. Um, I commend them on their, their uh, foresight to do capacity building and no better organisation than Nuffield to do that through. I can also say that uh, the uh, staff within APAL have been fantastic in supporting and encouraging me through the, through the journey. So firstly, a, a snapshot about our industry. We're, we have an oversupplied domestic market. We, we actually produce 310,000 uh, tonne of uh, apples, and that's increasing daily, uh, yearly, as our um, plantations become more intensive and our structures are becoming, and product, sorry, varieties are becoming more productive. We receive poor prices, and our margins are continually to be squeezed. Um, the biggest probably uh, the problem is our, that we're the highest cost producer in the world and our cost of labour is probably the most uh, largest cost of our, of our production. Our consumption is decreasing at 3% per annum and that's probably a lot to do with the competition in the snack food space with health bars and protein drinks and they've got a lot larger marketing budget than we do in the fresh fruit market. We're very reliant on the domestic market in Australia, and 88% of our produce ends up in the supermarkets. The margins in the supermarkets are increasing, and between 14, 15, 15, 16, they increased by 19%. We're actually not dissimilar to where New Zealand was around 10 years ago. They had a large, uh, large amount of entrance into the industry. They were all seeking after the high returns. Their grower numbers doubled within 10 years. And then they experienced the global gut, gl a global glut, their eroded competitive ex strength, their uh, decline in their key markets, and the varieties became commodities. The industry crashed, and the prices um, received an all-time low in 1997. So they deregulated their market, and then came an influx of exporters, further driving down the export price. They tried to cut costs and compete against Chile, but it resulted in further rationalisation and they went from 2,000 to 400 growers. But the growers that stayed in the industry had, were left and had to adopt or reinvent themselves or get out. So they focused on their clean, clean, clean green image and they introduced quality standards which they enforced. They in, uh, invested in their own personal development and they became voted as the most efficient productive growers in the world. They turned their, 60, their average producing orchards into 60 tonnes per hectare, and in Australia we're still below 40 tonnes per hectare. And it's now a $700 million industry with a, with a vision to be a billion by 2020. They're actually the new millionaire club. <coughs> so how can we become as successful as the New Zealanders? And of course that's become more profitable. To become more profitable, we have to intensify our orchards and we have to find new markets. And this has been successful in the citrus and grapes. We need to understand the financial performance of apples. There's a huge difference between the average and excellence and the difference between varieties. The dairy farm uh, between the average and the excellent might be $1,500 profit, um, profit per hectare. Within apples, when comparing the average to the upper quartile, there can be 20,000 profit, uh, profit per hectare and as much as 100,000 profit per hectare between the average performance of a poor variety and the excellence performance of a high-end variety. 
But the two limiting factors to improve our profitability is time and capital. In reference to time, it takes five years for an orchard block to be established or converted before any returns, let alone profits, are realised. And that's if you have picked the right variety to plant. In our district, the average age of the orchardists is around 50, 55 to 60 years old. Should they convert their orchards from traditional to intensive, given the time required? The grower may be planning to exit the industry and may not have any succession plan in place. The valuers use comparable sales method to value the, to value the orchard, and because the industry has been struggling, then the, the evidence of the orchard sold are not going to realise the investment that he has to put in. And vineyards are a case class case of this where, you know, unless the vineyards people have got into uh, wine making or value adding, then their land is only valued at land, land cost only. In the USA, I observed that the type of orchards, such as what I've just described, are actually converting their orchards into organic to improve their profitability rather than going through the cost to re-establish. Capital. At $100,000 per hectare to, uh, to re-establish, uh, the banks, it, it, there's a big gap. So the banks take a very conservative view of how they will lend against the security of an orchard and see the land usage with more risk. Banks will lend a lot more favourably to the uh, broadacre farmer as they see the, the agriculture as simple agriculture with low volatility. Orchard blocks are more specialised and reliant on the value of infrastructure. We're relying on the value of infrastructure, planting and improvements, and so they tend to lot, lend a lot less against the security. So therefore, there's a big gap between the investment that's required to fill, the, there's a big capital gap between the investment that's required and what the banks are willing to lend. Aside from the low returns, the other factors deterring the investor to our industry is the perishability of our product. We only have a set time to sell our product, and it's often at the helm of the market. It's the liquidity. The investor looking for the five-year exit plan is probably not going to be looking at orchards. We're volatile and specialised, and the corporate investors looking for ongoing, for ongoing concerns, looking for scale with a $10 million turnover plus. We've often got complicated family structures, and uh, we're not often ready for investment. We often have creative accounting systems and our long-term strategic planning is often not there. The value of the land in the apple-producing districts make it very hard to reach the targeted return on investment. The lack of commitment from growers to build new markets, both export that the New Zealanders do so well, and the value-added markets that the uh, Italians do so well with purees and chips, apples chips. But the biggest factor why we uh, that deters the investor is that we actually don't have the numbers. If we're going to attract the corporate investor, we need to have the performance data to assess horticulture, or agriculture, as an asset class against other asset classes such as share market or property market. The 26-year-old analysis sitting in this high-rise in Sydney can't recommend or encourage the investor to diversify into our sector if he hasn't got any of the performance figures to analyse against. So why don't we have the numbers? ABER often consolidate our industry, or all horticultural industries, with turf and nuts. And there's a large difference between the successful almond industry and the struggling industry. HIA, whilst some industries have done some projects in performance data, there hasn't been any cross-industry analysing. Our structures and organisations and geography make the data collection difficult and often costly. And the cost from one orchard to another can differ markedly depending on the climate, the access to markets, soil types, etc. But the most outstanding reason why we don't have the figures is because of our mindset, our mindset to share the information. So my travel took me to uh, South Turil in Italy, New Zealand, the USA, the UK, Netherlands, Switzerland, and I can only, with time factor, touch on a couple of these. But the Italians have a many-layered cooperative, cooperative system. They have 6,000 growers that supply 43 pack houses that are grower-owned. And those grower-owned cooperatives are actually owned to big marketing cooperatives, the VIP and the VOG. The annual statistics on the growers' operations are broken down for VIP and VOG and fully transparent to, them, to the public. 
the statistics are collected by Rattensbelund, which is a major banking group in South Tyrrell, and it's in their best interest that they know how the sector is evolving. Their understanding enables them to give credit based on their confidence and their knowledge in the sector. Meanwhile, our banks are reluctant as they have limited access to the vital information like farm performance data. I'm not saying that cooperatives work in every country because I think the culture of the Italians is why it's so successful. But in Washington, USA, I visited uh, Gold Diggers, which is an apple and cherry grower owned cooperative. And whilst I was there, it went into liquidation because the bank's, US bank pulled in their $18 million loan. Back in Australia, our mindset is completely different to the Italians, but it's important if we are going to collect data. And it's often due, difficult due to collect the data due to our cultural barriers and our confidentiality concerns. In actual fact, many growers don't even have the data uh, to even share. We need to revert from a lifestyle to lifestyle benefits of our business and we're too complacent about the business and the importance of data. We can't manage what we can't measure. We need to transit from the, from the competitive to supportive uh, instead, and our neighbours shouldn't be seen as our competitors, but the next person in the value chain instead. We don't have the investor mentality, and we have a compulsion to own our own farms, and we're closed often to any notion of the investor funding to close the gap for the purpose of growth and expansion. Clemens Letcher, meanwhile, back in South Tyrrell, his mindset is completely opposite due to his heritage and culture. He owns his own uh, 14 hectares of farm and the average farm in South Tyrrell is two hectares and it's valued at a million euro per hectare. There's a closed farm legislation in South Tyrrell to ensure the continuity of the single farm and consequently can only be passed down through the generations. Due to his inheritance and the subsidies, Clemens makes very good income but if he ever goes for any capital raising, the value of his land is never accounted for in any of his financial proposals because the land can never be sold. In New Zealand, John and Wendy Flowers had to change their mindset 10 years ago when they, when they hit the crossroads due, when the, due to the industry, as I explained before. They had to make their decision of whether to fully integrate or forego his infrastructure and become a professional specialised grower. They restructured their orchards to intensi intensify and growing and utilise their own equity and bank finance to restructure and grow. They are now one of the millionaire clubs. Opportunities. If we are able to change the mindset, and that may be, be over a generation, we'll be able to collect the performance data. Could there be an opportunity for the horticultural industry to be analysed against other uh, horticultural industries and furthermore to agricultural industries itself. Once we have the uh, mindset and we have the data, could there be an opportunity to create, to create an apple's futures, such as there is in the grain sector? Once we have the mindset and collected the data, could it be possible that a performance indicator, like the share market has for the AX200, be created for agriculture as an asset class? Is there an opportunity to create a structure to allow organisations to engage and invest into the horticultural industry equity bank? And say if we had an equity bank of say 200 million, the investment could be split and carved up amongst different horticultural segments and that could provide the scale and the managerial product and diversification required for the investor. By investing only in the upper quartile of growers, this will guarantee the best financial returns possible within the industry at the time. Investment, the long-term investment into our, into our industries will enable our industry players to improve their efficiencies through integration and amalgamation of entities. It will be able to provide the scale to attract further investment and have even more control of the supply chain it become more cost competitive in the global marketplace and this will entice growers into this space. We'll have the ability to adopt technology and mechanisation as it becomes available. And we'll have the efficient, large, profitable businesses. There could be an opportunity to be able to create strategic alliances with our friends across the ditch and uh, 
uh, market to the rest of the world produce from the clean green countries. So a few recommendations probably that I would have for the industry and the growers um, in becoming ready for investment is to improve our transparency in the supply chain and the supply chain and the supply chain relationships. We need to encourage and facilitate supportive networks rather than the competitive and cutthroat mentality that we currently have. Wherever possible, we need to look at sharing and consolidating our pack houses, cool rooms and infrastructure. We need to focus on improving the management and succession and skills of the growers um, and make them ready for uh, capability, make them capable and ready for investment. We need to be aggressively looking for new markets, both export and value added, to remove the reliance on the two supermarkets here in Australia. We need to gather information transparently and be readily available in standard terminology. We need to assist financial institutions in understanding our sector so that our farms and infrastructure can be fairly valued. In summary, if growers can find, if growers can find value added markets, exports and agritourism opportunities and the capital to redevelop, the future could be as bright as the New Zealanders. We have done this in our own orchards, but for most to do this, we need a better understanding of the business numbers. I love our industry. We grow fresh, healthy produce, and it's just ready to eat off the trees. It's, it is sustainable. We just have to work together to sort out our own backyard. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Bernard and my family that uh, in my absence, I had a travel partner friend called Lucy and all the staff back home. Uh, for assisting. Thank you.